So Richard, here we are with my video recorder that I can't get in focus. So tell us a bit about yourself. My name is Richard. Richard and I had known one another probably about 12 months and we met when we were out one night I was with a group of friends and he turned up with another group of friends and we had friends in common and very soon we sparked up a conversation and we just hit it off like I don't know what it is with friendships it's sort of um, there's just chemistry between us I suppose Richard uh... I guess he was a bit of a liner. Um, he's, he's different to everyone else, and yeah, you know, no one just no one wanted to know him. He um, he just he didn't fit in with the crowd, and I guess that was probably poor reflection on us. He was just Richard. He was he was a lovely boy, very loving. Caring. He did all right at school. He just happened to get in with the wrong crowd. No. Yeah. He just didn't fit in, really. At school, he was always getting into trouble because he just acted the clown. He just wanted to be have friends. He just, he was just, yeah. He was easily led. You just picked on him all the time. Oh, me and Richard could never see eye to eye. He never seen me as a father figure and always said, you're not my father, oh, you, you can never, never be my father. Oh, you never gave him a fair go. You never gave him a fair go. Yeah, but you've got to give one other a fair go. He never gave me a fair go either. He tried. He tried. So what's the story with your brother? Have you... Has things changed since your dad's died or...? Changed as you've grown up a bit more or...? You both got older? Yeah, we've been fighting on it now. What about? About your stepfather or...? Um... Yeah, sometimes. He reckons it's great. It's just... Just trivial, normal things. So we just spark up about them. We won't talk for ages. But I really try hard to get on with him. In the beginning, I mean, when we were little kids, our relationship was pretty good. I, you know, we are always mucking around together, and then, I don't know, something happened. We drifted apart, and as the years went on, we, we just, um, you know, we were different people. He did his stuff, I did mine, and I just thought his stuff was weird. You know, it just didn't, just wasn't normal. Um, and we'd always, you know, since, you know, that drifting apart, we'd always argue and never see eye to eye. I'd, I'd call him a loser and, you know, tell him to pull his socks up, get a job. Um, yeah, try and fit in with society, but he didn't care. He, he did his own thing. He, you know, he, he only thought about himself. Um, ignored other people. Um, but he, in the same take, and wanted to be treated like an adult. Uh, I think that if you know, if you want to be an adult, you've got to start acting like one, and he didn't see that. Never quiet. How they shut you out? Oh well, sometimes I just run out of things to say. I suppose he was a bit withdrawn. I don't know about depressed. But he used to, you know, he'd say, where are you going, Richard? And he'd say, out. Well, that's what teenagers say to their parents. I mean, mm. I can't remember having to sit down and talk, a, a real talk. He just put this barrier in front of us. I knew that he was 
upset about something and depressed is a pretty strong word like he was it wasn't like he was hiding in a corner or you know he was not getting out of bed or he lost a bit of weight and I just put that down to the fact with you know he wasn't eating the good food but he used to always go out and enjoy um, he was he was flat I'd say yeah I'd describe him as flat um, and it's hard to think that he was so flat that he would even consider doing something like that I thought we had a good friendship you should be able to tell me even if you can't tell your stepfather or your brother I know we have a good friendship and we have more than that there's oh, just things have been screwed up lately Have I done something wrong? No, you haven't. It's just me. It's something's going on in my head right now, and even I don't know what it is. He was. He was probably the worst I had seen him, and in hindsight, probably that was his lowest point. But I didn't pick up anything was that serious, like. I think the thing that shocked me was that it was the day before and, you know, um, I wanted to, I just got a new video camera and I wanted to sort of record a few things and as you do, you're just sort of mucking around and, you know, I was pretending that, you know, it was a job interview and I was trying to get him to talk about himself and um, his family and, again, um, all of those issues came up where he was upset about his family and the way his life had been in regards to losing his father and his um, loss of, well, any sort of decent relationship with his brother and he seemed fairly distant from, distant from his mother. probably saw him uh, probably about a month before he actually did did it. Um, it was at a nightclub that um, we usually don't don't go to because it's it's just not our scene. But the guys wanted to go there for a laugh, and I mean I didn't expect him to see there see him there, but I don't know why. Um, it's his sort of club. Um, we never really said much. Uh, we acknowledged each other, but we never said hello or, or talked to each other. It was like uh, he was either embarrassed or I, I just didn't want to know him. Yeah, that was probably it. Fleeting moment. It was like a, just like a stranger. Last time I saw him, I suppose it was the Thursday night. You know, he said he was going out. I said, where? And he said, just out. I said, do you want some tea? He says, nah, I'll be right. And off he went. And he must have come home, I don't know what time, early hours of the morning, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And the next day, well, I went to work and then when I came home from work, Oh, found him. It doesn't seem like there's, there's anything to be happy about. So I'm, just, I'm sick of this place, I'm sick of these people. I don't know. What, the town, you mean? Yeah. I've gone in the town. Maybe it got too hard for him, you know, copying all the, I guess, the flack off me and, you know, and all his mates sort of distanced themselves from him.
I don't even really know if he had many friends because, well, they never come around. Um, they stopped coming around. But why he killed himself? I don't know. Coward, maybe. Didn't want to face reality. I don't know. Um, I just wonder if it was sort of just everything compounded, you know, he was um, coming to terms with his sexuality and not that that's a reason to suicide, but certainly if you're at home all day and you're trying hard to get a job and you keep getting doors closed in your face and, you know, difficulty with your parents and your brothers and sisters and... He couldn't talk to me for whatever reason, um, I suppose because that would have been another problem that he had then of being rejected and losing a friendship, which, you know, we had a fantastic friendship. Yeah, I know he used to be awake all night and watch TV all night and sleep all day. I mean, I didn't think that was normal. But what could you say? What could, where could you go to? Yeah, I encourage him for work, but he wouldn't work. I suppose, yeah, but those were just jobs that were just, not, uh, yeah. Mm. I don't know, maybe we could have, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting how just having something as simple as a ring can make you think of certain places and people and times in your life, isn't it? Yeah, it's my best memory. Now it's yours. Turn the camera off. Turn it off. Um, I wished I had been more forthcoming in how my feelings were for him because it would have been a lot easier to get things out of the open and move on. Um, I just had no idea he was so depressed like, and concerned about coming out. Like, he gave me his father's ring, like, that's his most prized possession. And obviously that meant a lot to him. And by giving it to me, now every time I look at it, it's... Because we were talking about how places and stupid things like jewellery just make you remember certain times and people in your life. Like, he used to think of his father when, when he'd wear the ring. And now I think of him. Well, Richard, if you if you can't talk to me about things, who can you talk to? You know, we're really good mates. I've been for ages. I know, it's just... Some things you've just got to do on your own. I came home from work that afternoon, walked into his room. I thought he just might be still asleep or... Whatever. Um, saw the gun first. Um, his um, head was sort of slumped in um, a strange angle, and uh, there was a dark patch of blood just near his head, just there. Yeah, I got home about ten minutes after you. Yeah. Know. The police were here. Oh, what a mess. Terrible. Absolute mess. What must have been going through his mind to come to this? Hmm. really 
love you, that I just need to learn to sort things out by myself. He was, um, the more I probed him, the more upset he seemed to get. And, um, uh, he tried to get me to turn off the camera a couple of times and then he was, when I really pushed him, he, um, he said that he loved me and stormed out of the room or at least seemed like he was trying to run away from me, which I thought was strange because we did have a pretty good relationship and I suppose that's the threat of exposing your feelings like that to people is that you're going to be rejected or you're not going to be loved in return when you declare something like that to a close friend. Um. So do you think maybe your brother's jealous that you've got the ring and he hasn't? I don't think he'd care. He got, he got rid of most of Dad's photos after he died. Placed him with Mum and Mum and that bloody husband of hers. Well, I think I'm coping pretty well. Um, it's probably more an inconvenience for me because it's disrupted our lives to such an extent that you know, maybe, well, it's force, forced us to focus on Richard, which is a Richard trait, I guess. You know, him being the centre of the world. Um, yeah, so to me, I mean, I don't want to sound callous or anything, maybe I do. But, um, yeah, it's all over. Good. Let's get on with life. My only concern is Mum, she's going to, I think she'll feel it. Yeah. Sometimes I just walk into Richard's room and expect him still to be there and... I don't know, are we coping? We just go on. I mean, his brother's alright, he comes a bit more regularly now, we see a bit more of him. And that, that's good. Um, it's been uh, it's been hard for me. Yeah. Uh, I blame him. He blames me. And then I I know we shouldn't blame each other, but I think. Well, although we never maybe. Ever, we never got along. But he tried. Yeah, we tried, and it's just sad that it ever had to come to this. You know, and now we've just got to support one another. I just feel like I've let him down, really. Like, why didn't I do something about it? Why didn't I read more into all the things that we talked about that day? Or why didn't I tell him that it was okay? Why didn't I tell him that no matter what, I was still there for him? And, you know, we may not have had a relationship. We may have, but I had no no way of knowing that at the time.